You may think of the suboccipital region as just the back of the head. However, there's more to it than meets the eye. This region is home to several muscles that assist in various head and neck movements, as well as the vessels and nerves that nourish them. The suboccipital region is actually a pyramid-shaped muscle compartment located inferior to the external occipital protuberance and deep to the superior part of the posterior cervical region underlying the trapezius, sternocleidomastoid, splenius, and semispinalis capitis muscles. This region has four small paired muscles of which three of them form the boundaries of an area known as the suboccipital triangle. Superomedially, the suboccipital triangle is bounded by the rectus capitis posterior major muscle, superolaterally by the obliquus capitis superior muscle, and infrolaterally by the obliquus capitis inferior muscle. The floor of the suboccipital triangle is formed by the posterior atlanto-occipital membrane and the posterior arch of the atlas, while its roof is formed by the semispinalis capitis muscle. The main inhabitants of the suboccipital triangle are the vertebral artery and the suboccipital nerve. Now, let's take a closer look at the muscles of the suboccipital region. There are four suboccipital muscles, which lie deep to the semispinalis capitis muscle. First, there's the rectus capitis posterior major, which originates on the spinous process of the axis or C2 vertebra and inserts on the lateral part of the inferior nuchal line of the occipital bone. Second, there's the rectus capitis posterior minor muscle, which originates on the posterior tubercle of the posterior arch of the atlas or C1 vertebra. Then it goes on to insert on the medial part of the inferior nuchal line of the occipital bone. Third, there's the obliquus capitis inferior, which originates on the spinous process of the axis or C2 and inserts on the transverse process of the atlas. And finally, the obliquus capitis superior originates on the transverse process of the atlas and inserts on the occipital bone, between the superior and inferior nuchal lines. All four muscles are supplied by the suboccipital nerve and the vertebral artery, which lie in the central part of the suboccipital triangle. The main function of these muscles is maintaining the posture of the head, but they also assist in movements such as extension, lateral flexion, and rotation of the atlantoaxial joints. Now let's look at the nerves that provide innervation to the suboccipital muscles and the skin of the posterior cervical region. First, there's the suboccipital nerve, which is actually the posterior ramus of the C1 spinal nerve. From its origin, the suboccipital nerve travels between the cranium and the atlas until it courses within the suboccipital region alongside the vertebral artery. One thing to remember is that this nerve innervates the suboccipital muscles, but not any of the overlying skin. Next, there's the greater occipital nerve, which is a branch of the posterior ramus of spinal nerve C2. It emerges inferior to the obliquus capitis inferior muscle and then ascends to supply the skin of the posterior scalp. Then there's the lesser occipital nerve, which arises from the anterior rami of the spinal nerve C2 and C3. This nerve supplies the skin of the superior posterolateral neck and the scalp posterior to the external ear. Lastly, the posterior rami of spinal nerves C3 to C7 supply the intrinsic muscles of the back in the cervical region and the skin that covers them next to the vertebral column. Of course, the skin of the rest of the back is innervated segmentally by the posterior rami of the thoracic and lumbar spinal nerves. And now, just a quick quiz before the recap. Can you recall the four suboccipital muscles and the nerves in the suboccipital and posterior cervical regions? All right, as a quick recap, the suboccipital region houses four muscles, rectus capitis posterior major, rectus capitis posterior minor, the obliquus capitis superior, and the obliquus capitis inferior. Now, the rectus capitis posterior major muscle, obliquus capitis superior muscle, and the obliquus capitis inferior muscle form the boundaries of an area called the suboccipital triangle. The suboccipital nerve and vertebral artery can be found within this triangle. 
the suboccipital nerve innervates the suboccipital muscles, and the cutaneous sensation to the entire posterior cervical region is provided by the greater occipital and lesser occipital nerves and the posterior rami of spinal nerves C3 to C7. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.